Hello. Today we're going to continue our discussion on quasi-linear functions. Specifically, this time we'll look at a decreasing MRS example. Here we have the utility function ln of x1 plus x2. Additionally, we have the prices available to us of $5 per pencil and $2 per sheet of paper, as well as a $10 income to work with. Let's look at our maximization process. Again, with all quasi-linear problems, we're going to start by taking our marginal rate of substitution. As always, the function for the marginal rate of substitution is mux1 over mux2, or our marginal utilities of both x1 and x2. To take the marginal utility of x1, we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to x1 of our utility function. The derivative of ln of x1 would be 1 over x1. Our marginal utility of good 2 would just be 1 in this case. Putting that together, we would have 1 over x1 as our marginal rate of substitution. From there, we take our MRS test again. Our MRS test would be seeing what happens to our marginal rate of substitution as x1 increases and as x2 decreases. As x1 increases, this marginal rate of substitution decreases. We're dividing 1 by a larger number. Say we put 2 here, that would be 1 half. Then we put 3 here, that would be 1 third, 5, 1 fifth, etc our number is getting smaller and smaller as we increase the value of x1. As for when x2 decreases, nothing happens to this marginal rate of substitution because there's no x2 in this function. I will denote that as a horizontal line. In net, if as x1 increases, we have a decrease in our MRS, and as x2 decreases, our MRS remains constant, we then have a diminishing MRS in net. From there, if we see that we have a diminishing marginal rate of substitution on a quasi-linear function, our next step is to solve it similar to a Cobb-Douglas type utility function. What we did for Cobb-Douglas is take our MRS and set it equal to our price ratio. MRS equals P1 over P2. Our MRS in this case, we found to be 1 over X1. And our price ratio would be $5, the price of good 1, over $2, the price of good 2. This means if we cross multiply X1 equals 2 fifths. If x1 equals 2 fifths, I can take this value and plug it into my budget constraint to figure out the optimal amount of x2. My budget constraint is again p1x1 plus p2x2 equals m. Plugging in for the variables that we know, we have 5x1 plus 2x2 equals 10. From there, I can plug in 2 fifths for x1 into that function. These 5s cancel out. And we're left with 2 plus 2x2 two equals 10, meaning x2 is equal to 2x2, two two rather, is equal to 8. So x2 is equal to 4. These would be our answers. Optimally, we should purchase 2 fifths of a unit of x1 and four units of X2.